How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, definitely a rough day in the Iowa Trapper household. Um, find out tomorrow if I fractured my left foot or not at about 11 o'clock. I think that's my appointment. And our German short hair, um, we think ate something she should have and has some kind of blockage. Um, she can't even stand up hardly, so I gotta take her to the vet first thing in the morning, and then I got my appointment later in the day. Um, definitely rough, definitely rough. So, hope everybody's day is a lot better than mine. Um, it's definitely been a rough one. Midwest Trapper, Jason, hunting and stuff. Hunt ready. Logan, how we doing, guys? Michael Grant's in here. How we doing, man? It's definitely been a rough day. Definitely been a rough day. Oh, hot. There you go, hunting and stuff. Or hunt, hunt ready. That boy. Off the hook. It's been a pretty rough day, my man. Pretty rough day. Neil, the cable guy. Hey, life happens, man. Life happens. Um, I think I'm probably more worried about our, our German short hair than I am myself. Um, bones heal if I did break something, but that, that dog's kind of a, a pretty big family member to the household. So, um, so vet, basically, our German short hair, we think she got into something. Um, she ate, like, fabric softener or maybe, like, a Tide Pod. She threw something up that was really blue the other day, and now she's extremely lethargic, can't even stand. So she, I get her to the vet tomorrow at 7.30 on my scouting today. Um, like a <laughs> like a moron, I went out and was in just tennis shoes, some cheap tennis shoes, and I basically going down a steep ditch. It's actually my favorite location, my absolute favorite location. I lost my footing with my right foot, and my left foot stayed planted, but I rolled over it. Um, it's been some really sharp shooting pain ever since. Uh, I'm struggling pretty good. So I got my appointment tomorrow at 11, I think. So hopefully nothing's fractured in it, but pretty rough. Uh, um, the color's gotten a lot more since then. So the color's, my left foot's starting to get some nice blue coloration to it. Um, I don't know. We'll know more tomorrow. Uh, the dog, I don't know. I'm more worried about the dog. That's my kids is kids is thing so i hope not jason i hope not oh cool michael cool mark how we doing buddy uh, it's been a little bit since i've seen you in here um i'm just out here making some snares in the shop uh you know rough day guys but no matter how rough it is you know you kind of keep having to to look forward. You can't just sit here and stressing and worrying isn't going to be anything. I got our dog going to the vet the first thing available tomorrow morning. Um, probably going to stay the night, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm sure this is going to cost a pretty penny, but um, that's rough. It's rough. Uh, yeah, off the hook. Um, I... This sounds terrible, but it's not so much for me. I grew up with dogs with German short hairs. My dad raised and bred and trained bird dogs from all across the country. Um, all across the country. At one point when I was in high school, we had like 35 dogs in for training from 14 different states. To me, dogs were kind of a tool. Um, unfortunately, it's just, it's just how I was raised with it. Um, but since we got this one, you know, she's become more of a family and... The kids look at her as family member and she she's not doing well um hopefully we'll get her in tomorrow morning i'm guessing she has some kind of intestinal blockage um she did stand up and drink some water today which makes me feel a lot better about things um it just is what it is dan hopefully it doesn't come to that buddy neil that's the thing man i all my if I'm not in hip boots, I've got insulated everything. And at 65 degrees a day, I just run around tennis shoes. It's my own fault. Um, I should have known better, but 
uh, I got the footage of it on my best raccoon trail that I have and I, I took a video of it and you can actually see me fall and kind of go silent for a second because I finished the video but man it hurt and it's only gotten worse since um, pretty pretty rough well I'm way behind guys Uh, Logan, she's been throwing up, but it's all only been stomach bio. She's not throwing anything else up. She threw something up blue the first day, Sunday morning, and we thought it was done with, but she's kind of gone downhill the last couple days. No, oh, Hoyt 15, yeah. Well, that's what we don't know. Um, vet tomorrow morning, hopefully we'll know a lot more, so... James, I took a nice little, uh, I was filming my, my favorite trapping location and my right foot, which was on top of the hill, gave out. My left foot stayed planted and I rolled up and over my left foot. It stayed planted. So I had my left foot at an angle and then I kind of rolled up over the top of it and it never moved. And it's, it's bothering me pretty good. Logan, I appreciate it, man. I, I'll tell you what, I was pretty nervous. My dad rode with me today, um, and he saw me fall, and he saw me keep filming, and as soon as I stopped filming, I just stopped, and I just laid there, and he's like, are you all right? And I'm like, I think so, but it's definitely hurting a lot worse than it did about 10 hours ago, so hopefully me, I, I'm more worried about my short hair, to be honest with you, just because it's such a, a, a family member, especially my kids and wife, they're, they're devastated right now, they're scared to death, and if my trapping season gets postponed or whatever, I mean, it sucks, but it's part of it. I'd much rather, tomorrow I'd much rather hear that they're able to fix her pretty quick versus my foot being okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll trap in a cast if I have to. I'm, I'm stubborn like that, so. But thanks, Logan. Todd, I appreciate it, man. We're going <laughs> to, I'm hoping so. Oh, absolutely, Kansas. Absolutely. Um, I have seen – actually, today when we we're headed back – so I was planning on scouting all day today. Made it till noon, and that foot injury happened, and I did, like, two more locations, and I, I told my dad who's with me, I'm like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. It hurts too bad. And on our way back, I saw a dead raccoon and a dead skunk that was hit last night on my uh, trails on the highway. Um Pretty frustrating because I'm like, and it was a beautiful skunk, beautiful skunk. So pretty frustrating. Steve, I really appreciate it, man. I really do. Yeah, Dan, she got into something. We don't know what it is yet, but she ate something that, that made her really sick. Um, she was able to stand up today and, and drink a little bit. But here just a little bit ago, she went to go throw up and literally just fell over on her side and kind of convulsed. So. Pretty scary, pretty scary, especially since, you know, she's probably more of a family member here than I am, to be honest with you. Um, I'm always working, always hustling, always doing something, and the family comes home after a stressful day, and it's good to have those, you know, those, those what they call fur babies, I guess, um, there to make them feel better, so. Mark, I hope so too, man, but like I said, I'm more worried about the dog with the family, but the, my family needs that dog, for sure. Um, internet vet, uh, she did actually go pee. Um, it got to a point where she, she's been trying and I went outside, went outside and, and went through the grass with my hand and she did go pee. Um, no number two at all, but she is drinking water. And what I learned with my dad, as long as they're drinking water, it's not extremely severe. I mean, it's bad. I know it's bad, but as long as she's drinking, we're all right. John, um, I don't know, man. I've got like four or five of these things. Uh, probably go through one a year between cutting pogos and cutting snares. Mark, we don't have any rat poison here. Um, what I am thinking is we got she got into some kind of Tide Pod or fabric softener or dishwasher detergent. Um, that's about the only thing we can think of. No, no, um, Kansas outdoorsman. She, so she's all hunched over, like her gut hurts. Like she's walking all hunched over. 
Um, but yeah, there's something, something there. I think she has some kind of blockage from some kind of plastic or something. Ah, James, I don't know, man. It, it's not crazy swollen, um, but she is turning a pretty blue color, kind of right where your baby toe and your next toe go off from your ankle right in there. She's turning some pretty colors. Um, I don't know why I took my sandals off to look at it, but, um, it is what it is. You know, it's my own fault. Like I said, I, I didn't have the proper footwear that I probably should have. Um, it's just been a rough day, fellas, rough days, but you know, it, everybody has rough days. We all have bad days, whether it's on the trap line, whether it's life in general, at work, your transmission goes out, you know, you find a leak in your roof. Everybody has bad days. And my opinion is how you handle these bad days. Um, I don't want to say this in a way that sounds bad, but I've been fortunate enough growing up, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. We had a lot of bad days. Um, we had a lot of bad days. I, I could, and I, I, I become very appreciative and very thankful for the few good days. You know, if you can come home after a day of work, you've got food on the table, you've got a house over your head, and everybody's healthy, it's a good day. And everybody should be thankful for that. Today was not that day for us. Um, and, and it's rough. I get that. But we'll overcome it. We will. Beat the snot out of my body on you. Hoyt 15. I'll, I'll tell you what, man. You know, I'm only 30. How old am I now? 34. That's bad. I have to think about it. But I, when I was younger, when I was 18 through 24, I thought I was invincible. I can jump off roofs when I'm roofing. I can, I'm invincible. I had that kind of arrogant attitude. And I'm paying for it now. My knees give me issues. My back, especially with my job, lifting 1,000 pounds a day when I was younger. I pay for it. I do. And I know I do. Um, I wish I know now what I knew then, or at least had the attitude to understand it then. Um, but life goes on, man. You got to make the best of what you got. Reef, how we doing, buddy? How we doing, man? Um, wish it was more of a cheerful life tonight. Uh, but it's just, it's been rough. So the very least I can do is come out here and make some snares. Um, kind of keep the mindset of keep pushing. Thanks, Derek. I appreciate it, man. Oh, <laughs> really? Really, John? Mine's not that bad. It, it's swollen, but it's not terrible. I'm really hoping he goes, hey, it's a good sprain. Move on with your life. Um, but I am nervous. I definitely am nervous. So, it hurts. <laughs> man, does it hurt. I won't even tell you the stuff I've tried to make this thing quit hurting tonight, but it's it's pretty rough. It, it, it's what it is, you know. What do you do? I mean, you, you can't stop. The minute you stop, life stops. you got to keep pushing forward. It's kind of like my, my YouTube channel's base, you know, find the drive. You push yourself past it. You push yourself through the pain. You move on with your life. <laughs> but I appreciate it, man. I really do. Um, I'm hoping for a good day tomorrow, mostly with the short hair, but at the same time, I'm hoping this foot's all right. Uh, it's just, things get rough. Things get rough. Hey, next gen. How are you doing, buddy? Um, John, I have not tried that yet. No. <laughs> Treasure. Oh, uh, I, no, I, I hope so. I, I hope it heals so we don't have to amputate that thing. <laughs> uh, Vet, I tried to ice it a little bit earlier, but I'm stubborn. Um, I got too much stuff to do to sit at home. <sighs> Logan, uh, man, I appreciate it, buddy. I really do. Um, this isn't supposed to be a, a sympathy poor me thing. It's just a <laughs> Vet or a Vet. 
Mark, Logan, I appreciate you guys. That's not what this is for. I just want to get out here and show that life goes on, guys. You, you've got to push through your obstacles. Um, <laughs> Logan, uh, it. we've all had, I mean, excuse my French, but at some point we've all had our ass kicked in life. Um, it is what it is. You, you've pushed through it. You push through your obstacles because the moment you quit living and keep, quit doing you, what's the point? You know, it, it sucks. My, my wife's in bed with our short hair right now. Just miserable. Um, she feels, she's scared to death for that dog. And I am mostly for my family's sake because that dog is, is family to them, but it just sucks, man. You know, it's one of those things, but it's, you got to keep moving forward. You can't just, <sighs> life goes on. You just got to keep pushing forward. Find your drive, guys. <laughs> Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. The best Chris Farley movie ever made, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, that's tough, man. That's tough. Yeah, James, that's what we're hoping for. Um, unfortunately, I'm calling in sick to work tomorrow. Well, sick, I guess you could say. Um, between my foot and the dog, I'm just going to take a personal day. Um, get the dog to vet in the morning. Probably ice my foot until my appointment at 11. Um, hopefully they say, hey, just stay off it for a couple days. You'll be fine, but... The more the day goes on, the more nervous I get. Um, <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> it hurts a lot, but I can't just sit inside, sit there and watch TV. If I'm gonna do that, I might as well be out here making snares, right? Getting ready for the trapping season. That's gonna happen one way or another. Um, worst case scenario, I just don't hit my goal, but I'm still gonna be trapping, so. Dredger, uh, my snares are 5 64ths, seven by seven. I'm using the Deathblow Cam Lock. Um, it's got teeth right here. I'm not sure if you can see that real well. Um, but I love these snares. I love these. Flintlock did you? Flintlock! Hey, man, you didn't have to do that, buddy. I, I missed that. Thank you, Vet, for, for sharing that. Um, man, I feel bad. I shouldn't have gotten live now if you guys are going to think I'm a charity case because that's not what this is about. Um, I just want to get on here and you know share that life gets tough guys we've all been there every one of us no matter how wealthy you are no matter how you know in, indestructible you think you are life happens um, today for me is my own foolish incident I should have been more prepared um, having our short hair sick is it's rough the family definitely definitely feels it um but man you guys are awesome you guys didn't have to do that uh neil holy cow sir that is no <laughs> wow you are a good man neil you are a good man uh, i do expect we're gonna have if my my expectation is correct we're gonna be having a surgery tomorrow at some point because I think she has some kind of blockage um, with some kind of wrapper or something she ate. So um, that is that is huge, man. You you guys are amazing. By all means, you did not have to do that. Um, wow. Absolutely, Neil. You're an amazing person. I really appreciate that. Uh, Hoyt. I, if I'm able to make it, it's going to be Friday afternoon into evening. Um, obviously, now there's more variables than I anticipated. Um, but I, I am planning on being there Friday afternoon. Not sure what time in the afternoon, but I do want to be there. Flintlock, Neil, Vet, you, all you guys, that is amazing. You did not have to do that. That's Man, I almost feel bad going live now because I don't want people thinking I'm a charity case because that's not what this is. But um, 
Oh, vet, trust me. Next time I'm drinking, I, yeah. Neil, for sure, man, that, that is huge. I really appreciate that. Um, it, it did hit us in a rough time, you know, trapping season's coming up where I take a lot of time off work. Um, so I always kind of prepare all through the summer. I work way more hours than I need to, um, and, and really try to prepare for trapping season with a lot of time off work. And, you know, literally less than three weeks from pre-staking, this happens and it hit us pretty hard. So scab, how are we doing? Uh, next gen, I'm not sure about Beeman yet, man. It just depends how, how things go this weekend. Logan, that that's awesome, man. I appreciate it. You didn't have to do that either, Logan. Uh, wow. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. I, I appreciate the support so much, guys. That I can't even tell you how much that means to me. You know, everyone talks about what family is, and it's obvious right now, family is more than blood. Um, you guys are awesome, and and our family really appreciates it. I can't, really, guys. Y'all are awesome. But, like I said, we just, you got to push forward. You got to push forward. Oh. Today... I, I filmed it on my last, it, it was sucks, it was my best location, and I trap it every year, my favorite location, and as soon as I stepped off the shoulder, my right foot gave out, I landed on my butt and slid over my left foot, and it didn't move, and oh man, instant pain, instant pain, so, I'm nervous about that too, but, you know, you put me in a waterproof cast and we'll make it work one or another. As long as I can get hit boots over it or whatever I have to do, we're going to make it work. Hey, Donald, how we doing? Pest Hunter, what's up? Mark, um, like I said, I'm planning on being there. Um, it just might be for, for three hours or so. <sighs> depends on what time I get there. It uh, depends if I'm even working that day. Um, depends how this goes tomorrow. I might not be working at all for the next few weeks, which would be... <sighs> I, I won't say bad because I can get a lot of stuff done, but... A lot of stuff done, but at the same time, you know, guys got to work. I was talking to a guy in New York today. Uh, so I guess New York has a six inch restriction on their conibears and the top of the trap can only be eight inches above the ground. Um, that's kind of a unique law that I've never heard of. Um, so basically, the top of any conibear can only be eight inches above the ground. Oh, wait. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, you did not have to do that by any means. Uh, but I really appreciate it. Um, definitely going to help out with what's coming up here in the next 24 hours, that's for sure. Oh, Ohio Trapper. I'm not worried about getting in the ditches at all. I'll get down there with a the cast. That doesn't bother me at all. It's the water stuff that I'm planning this year that I'm nervous about. Oh, Nick. Okay, so you're from New York. Oscar, how we doing? Uh, it's been a rough day for me, buddy. Um, but yeah, Nick, uh, that, that's crazy. Um, I've never heard of that before. So in New York, yeah, six-inch trap um restriction and the top of the trap going to be eight inches above the ground so this individual individual reached out to me and he asked me he said so what do you know with the height from the top bar to the bottom bar on h stands because i can only be eight inches above the ground total and i was like that's interesting i've never heard of such a thing um but then yeah i started talking to him and and i kind of referred to him to either my muskrat stretchers that i use or the stakeizers because I think one of those two is going to be his best bet. Um, I think stakeizers would be a lot better than H stands um, 
for someone trapping in New York with that kind of with that kind of restriction. PA, I'm hoping not. Hunting and stuff, I don't care. I'll just I'll cover the whole thing in flex seal if that's what it comes down to. Scab, we don't know yet. I got an appointment tomorrow at eleven to find out. Decatur, that's yeah. You got the uh, Illinois convention coming up this weekend, isn't it, Blakely's? I think it's this weekend. Seventh and eighth, yeah, would be this weekend. Yeah, Logan, you think I'm kidding? Uh, worst case scenario, if this thing does have issues, I will put Flex Seal all over it, and we're going to be trapping. Hey, Jeep fam. Yeah, thanks for saying something, buddy. You take care, my friend. The size restriction is only if placed alone. We can use bigger traps and boxes. Okay. Okay, Homestead. Um, this individual that reached out to me, he seemed kind of might have been a new trapper, so I might bring that up to him um, and message him about that. Uh, that might be something that would benefit him um, if he goes into the, the cubbies or something like that. That's pretty cool. I did not know that. Thank you for sharing that, man. I appreciate that. Oh, hunting and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I, it's throbbing. I mean, probably should have it elevated right now, but there's stuff to do in the shop. Um, I got, for those of you who don't know, I got my freezer room all set up. I got to replace a light up here, but the freezer room's all set up and ready. All the freezers now turn on. Um, we got rid of a couple bad ones here yesterday. Uh, got everything switched out, and the the freezer cave, as I'm calling it now, um, is working well. <laughs> Scab. Oh, don't, Oscar. Not at all, man. Um, not at all. You're welcome anytime you jump in here. Made it through trapping for a month with a blown ACL, so I'm flex seal and you'll hit 59. <laughs> yeah, that, that isn't that crazy, next gen. Um yeah, next gen, his first year and he hit it solid. He had a was it you say one or two? Yeah, is is one he blew out his ACL and trapped and heck last year he caught six hundred raccoons, six hundred and four, I think it was. Um, going to college full time, playing college football and caught six hundred. So um that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing, my friend. You'll blow me out of the water before not before long. Okay, Flint Lock, that's good that's a good point. Um I guess I didn't know Bob Noonan was from New York. Um I thought he's from Pennsylvania, I guess, because he's got some really good mink videos too. Hey, Mark. Logan here, we got to be 200 yards. Oscar, I'm sure there's several elk hunters in here. Um, I am not one of them here in Iowa, but your western states do. Oh, man. Next gen, that's crazy. Blew out both meniscus and an ACL. That's <laughs> you're more of a man than I am, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I almost feel bad for uh, next gen because he shot his target buck in like the first two hours he was hunting this this bow season. So that's crazy. Lose a lot of two twenty still in boxes. The box just have certain requirements as well. Use them for cooning. Okay, Homestead. No, I appreciate I appreciate your advice on this, man. Um, I, I don't know anything about New York laws, so uh, this individual that reached out to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna relay this information to him. So I really appreciate it. Um, anything else you can give me? He was thinking, you know, he thought about using dog proofs, but he really wanted to use some cona bears, and he told me kind of his his laws and restrictions. Well, I mean, I don't know I don't know anything about New York laws and restrictions, so um, that's good to know. That's really good to know. Oh, Oscar, yeah. That's 
I mean, this is only half my freezers that I got. I've got a lot more. I um, use occasionally down here. I just think getting to road line is amazing. John, I am very, very thankful to be able to run a road line because a lot of states can't. Um, the Conibear boxes, I will run some late season, but I will say this with caution. Anytime you bait a Conibear, you have to be extremely cautious on what you're doing because it can result in very, very bad situation. Um, I'm fine with setting my 220s in trails because the trails I set in are very, very tight, very low. Um, I'm not worried about non-targets, but as soon as you start baiting them in boxes, bad things can happen. That being said, I am planning on doing a lot of that, but I have to be very, very careful. <laughs> really, Ohio? That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, scab, that's crazy. I I honestly wonder if I got like a partial torn meniscus. If I'm ever on my knees for a long period of time, I know that sounds bad. But if I'm making a set for some reason I'm on my knees, I stand up. As the process of standing up, I, a sharp pain will hit in either knee and just drop me. I'll stand back up again, it's completely fine. Um, doesn't bother me at all. But one out of probably once or twice a day during trapping season, I stand up from sitting on my knees and just, I mean, it dropped me, but then it's instantly gone as soon as I stand up again. So it makes me think there's something catching in there. All right, Blake, please you take care, buddy. Um, hopefully we'll see you in Bloomfield. Oh no, you're not going to that. You're going to uh, Illinois and Oklahoma. So, um, or yeah, Illinois and Oklahoma. So you take care of yourself, buddy. Exactly, Logan. Exactly. Oscar. I don't know if either of those kinds. That's interesting. Scab. That don't sound good. I don't know what that is, but it don't sound good. I was kind of hoping it's something that I could just fix pretty easy. Like I said, um, like somebody else said in here a little bit ago, I was hard on myself. You know, when I was roofing when I was younger, hey, to get off the roof, let's just jump 10 feet off the roof and tuck and roll. You'll be fine. And now I'm definitely, definitely paying for it. Yeah, you might be right next gen. Um, something I definitely need to look at. Hey, five seven eight beta. How we doing, bud? Um, so our German short hair is really really sick right now. I got to get her to the appointment. Um, seven o'clock. Except, well, they open at seven. I'm gonna get her there by seven thirty tomorrow. We think she ate like a Tide Pod or um, some fabric softener or even dishwasher detergent. Um, she won't even stand up hardly right now, so she's really sick. And today, scouting, I rolled up over my left foot, and I'll find out tomorrow at about 11 o'clock if I fracture something in my left foot. So, been a rough day, rough day. Oh, cool, cool, Michael, that's awesome. <laughs> Oh, cool, Hoyt. Okay, yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, Logan, you take care, buddy. Thank you, man. I really do appreciate it. GNC. Interesting, Patrick. I'm going to have to take a look at that. Hey, Hunt Ready. I appreciate it, bud. Um, yeah, it's been a rough day, but hopefully tomorrow's better, right? Tomorrow's the first day of the rest of your life, so. All right, Ohio. You take care of yourself, man, and uh, we'll see you soon, bud. 
Yeah, five, seven, eight. It's been been pretty rough day. Um, I think I'm more worried about the short hair. Um, definitely the wife and kids kind of kind of baby. Um, yeah, just hoping for the best. That's all I can say. I was out scouting today, and Oscar, I was standing on an incline like this, and my right foot gave out. My left foot stayed planted, and my body fell and rolled up over my left foot, and it never never moved. So my left foot was like this, and no, oh, hold on, I'll get it right in the camera. It was like this with my leg here, I guess like this probably, and then I just rolled up and over it, and it never moved. And that like baby toe to next toe, those bones coming up through there, that's where it's all swollen and starting to turn some pretty colors. So. Pretty rough. Yeah. PA, you're not wrong. I'm going to have to chase that sucker off my spots. Pretty soon I won't be able to catch him, though. <laughs> Especially with stuff like this going on. No, he actually he actually is not far from me. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, he's actually seen some of my spots. Um, yeah, no, right next to you, I could never catch you. I, I've shown him my personal spots before. Um, when I first met him, he came down here. Definitely a risk I took, you know, because I've been burnt before. Um, I've got some competition that's not so friendly, but but I trust him. Um, I showed him what I'm looking for, and I knew he was in the area too. And, and I trust him, you know. Hey, this is what I'm looking for, this type of terrain. This is what I focus on. If I ever see in this area, I'll kill you. But this is what I'm focusing on. And I trust him. He's a good kid. Um, he was raised right, so I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Oh yeah, Mark, I appreciate you stopping in. Um, I think I'll be in Bloomfield. Uh, you know, everything going well. I'll be pre-staking the next day if I show up Friday night, so I won't be able to stay late, but, um, I definitely want to make it for sure. Five seven eight. Thanks, bud. Uh, Mark, she's only two. Um, she just turned two here a couple months ago. Uh, we think she got in something. So I raised short hairs for years. I know a lot about them. Um, I was really concerned earlier today when I got home after my injury. Um, but tonight I did watch her stand up and go get a drink of water. Um, she threw up about an hour later, which is just stomach bio because she hasn't been eaten. Um, but since she was attempting to drink something, I do feel better about it. But either way, I think, you know, taking her to vet tomorrow morning, first thing, she's got some kind of blockage, I think, some kind of intestinal blockage from plastic or whatever she ate. But I think that's the best case scenario. All right, Pest Center. We'll see you later, bud. Don, I'm not sure. Um, so Beeman would be this weekend. I'm supposed to take my boy duck hunting Saturday and Sunday. I'm supposed to be working Sunday. Um, depends on what they say tomorrow. I might be in a cast by the end of tomorrow. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping to make Beeman. It'd be awesome, even if it's just for, for an hour or so. Um but it's hard to say right now, man. It We definitely got kind of got turned upside down today um, when all this stuff happened. Oh, next gen, you're 100% right, man. That's, you know, you've gone out and you've done your homework. Next gen's got a hell of a line planned for this year. Um, you guys need to check out his channel if you're not, not already doing it. Uh, the kid's going to catch more coon than me by far here in the next couple of years. Mark, the best, well, really, when I was younger, my best friend, my German short hair named Jake, um, he died at nine. Um, he was our best hunting dog. I killed my first pheasant over him Christmas Day when I was like 13 years old. Um, I'll never forget that dog. But... Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Oh, vet, that's terrible. That's that's terrible. Hunting stuff? No, I don't. I probably should. 
Um, I got the Velcro sandals and I strapped it up tight to kind of keep it from getting worse, but or swelling worse, but not really doing much good. Really, five, seven, eight. That's crazy. Scab, I hope so, man. But what what worried me was it's getting worse as the day goes on. Um, normally, so this happened at noon. I figured by four or five, you know, if it was minor, I'd be starting feeling better. But it's feeling worse. Um, definitely feeling worse. So that's what makes me pretty nervous about it. I can't hardly put any weight on it at all. It's <laughs> 260 pounds had to limp out here pretty good. Scab, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I'm, I'm starting to feel it a little more. Yeah, Don, and that, so with me, it, it's hard. Everybody goes their own way, I guess, is the best way to say this. We raised German short hairs all my youth. You know, like I said, my dad had 30 plus German short hairs in for training across the country. We raised and sold bird dogs. Um, after my dog Jake died, and, you know, we lived out in the country. Um, my dog Jake, he went downhill. Dad looked at me with tear in his eyes and he said, it's time. And I'll never forget that. Laying in bed, crying my eyes out, and I heard the shot. Um, it's going to bring tears to my eyes now. I'll never forget that. Uh, that sucked. But for me, after that, I kind of went the other direction than most people. Um, I kind of refused to, to love an animal again because... I knew their life would end before mine would. Um, so I, I, that's kind of how I deal with it. But my wife and kids, seeing them go through this with the short hair sick, is that's pretty rough. That bothers me a lot. Um, so hopefully it doesn't come down to that. Hunting and stuff, as soon as I get out of here, we're going to be hitting a nice cold shower, I'm sure. Oh, PA, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep with it, to be honest with you. Internet vet, I was 14. 14, I think. Um, it was April 6th. I remember that. I don't know how old I was, but it was April 6th. Uh, I don't know. Most people love animals more, but I kind of went the other direction on it. Um, not saying it's right or wrong, but you know, at that point forward, I always looked at dog our short, short hairs as tools, as you know, they're raised to to find birds, and I went that route with it. Um, probably not the right way, but we're also not going to do a therapy session tonight of of why I am how I am, but. Yeah, Oscar, it's tough. And, and that's the thing, like, this dog, Jake, that I had, he wasn't, he was the one that I never looked at as a tool. You know, he was the dog that if if I had a bad day at school or something, I could go up there and, and lay down with him in his kennel, and he'd just lay on my lap and just kind of be there. Um, I'll never forget that. Uh, a solid liver head, very, very liver roan short hair. Um Actually, on my next live, someone remind me. I got pictures of him. I'll bring him down here. Um, great dog. Great dog. Yeah. Yeah, five, seven, eight. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Oscar, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, sir. But, you know what? Life goes on. We recover. We move on. We move forward. You got to keep that, you know, you got to keep looking forward. Um, as soon as you stop doing that, that's when you're in trouble. And it's tough sometimes. It's, it's really tough.
HK Kennels in South Texas for his champion. Oh, cool, Flintlock. That's awesome. Um, yeah, our German short hair, um, we ran all Dixieland breeds, or bloodlines, I should say. Um, Clown was a big um, kind of background, but we avoided them. Uh, mostly Dixieland is what we ran, but yeah, we had all kinds of kids or, or offspring from grand champions um, in the field trial world, so yeah, John, exactly. Hot and stuff, I'm hoping so, man. I'm hoping so. Hey, how we doing, boss? What's the weather like up there today? Oof, that was a bad one. Yeah, Oscar, it's tough. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. I mean, I know the wife's pretty nervous about it. Um, and she's lost a couple couple real close companions of dogs here recently in the last five years. So it is kinda it's kinda funny because when we got this German short hair, she's gonna be my hunting dog. She's gonna be tough and rough, and then pretty soon she became a has to sleep on the, the bed and has to grow up on the couch every night and I'm like well, she's ruined, but yeah, hunting stuff for sure. Uh, John, not much. Um, now, probably a little more if I was to buy stuff because cable's going up. But um, so I make my snares about five foot long. Oh, boy, that's tough saying. I guess I had about 50 cents in there, um, give or take, when I bought these this material for them. Because um, I buy a thousand foot of cable, and then the 564 is like 40 bucks, 45 bucks. Um, my death blow snares, that was the expensive part. They were like 30 bucks for 100. Um, the double feral ends. I mean, you buy a hundred of them for six bucks. Then you got a deer stop and a single feral. So, yeah, I'd guess 50 cents at the most. To which one, Oscar? What are you talking about? My old short hair that I used to have? Twenty. Yeah, John, and that's not bad. I mean... These guys got to make some money putting them together. So, um, yeah, if you were to buy stuff in bulk to make them, you're probably around 50 cents. Now, maybe 75 cents a piece. Um, don't quote me on that because I don't know where prices are exactly. But, um, you know, the guys making them got to probably at least double their money on them. Oh, oh he knew I loved him. He knew... When my dad told me it was time, I went up there and cried my eyes out, and he laid in my lap. He could hardly move, but... All right, talk about something else, something positive. That's going to that's gonna drag me down, fellas. Treat dropped in a deep bucket of floor. See you later, Tuesday, man. Oh, good. Five, seven, eight. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Patrick, I guess I don't even know about any USA cable. Um, I do know there's China and Korean cable, and you want the Korean by far. Um, I, I know of them. I don't know them personally. Like I said, I was young. I was in high school, in middle school when my dad was doing this, so... Um, but my dad surely would.
Yeah, you're right, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> it just sucks. I mean, what what do you do? I mean, you know, there's when bad things happen, and hopefully this doesn't happen to ours, but um, when bad things happen, you kind of have to, you know, grieve but move forward because life still goes on for you and your family. Saw a mink scab. I went scouting today, and the little bit I did get to scout, I saw a lot of mink and a lot of raccoon signs, so I'm really excited. Uh, no, 578, not a whole lot. If we do, generally they got something going on. Hey, thanks, Mark. I really appreciate it, man. Um, the super chat and everything means the world to me, so thank you, bud. Yeah, Don, that's all we can do. Um, it, it sucks, but... When you sit there and just worry about it all the time. Yeah, you can be stressed and worried and whatnot and, and hope for the best, but at the end of the day, you know, you still have to you still have to live, you still have to move on. Um, and I know if I'm I'm not even gonna talk about worst case scenario. Let's not even talk about it. No kidding, Patrick. That's I'm sorry, but that's kinda funny. I feel bad for him, but yeah, you have doggy doors. You're going to invite raccoons into your house. Finally bound bank den for the year. All your old ones are high under. Oh, nice, next gen. Yeah, there's not many bank dens right now. <laughs> not many at all. That one was probably under six foot of water last year. Really, John? That's crazy. Five seven eight. That don't surprise me, buddy. Yeah, Oscar, it's throbbing pretty good right now. I can actually feel my heartbeat through it, which probably tells me I should probably go inside and get it elevated again. But I got a lot of stuff to do. Oh, really, Flint Hills? Um, I just had a, a lady message me. It was kind of funny here. Actually, right before I went live. She sent me a video through Messenger, and she's like, what the hell is that? And she's sitting in, you can tell, the living room watching TV, and all you hear is that distinct, that very distinctive, ah, ah, in the background. I'm like, you got fox right outside of your house. And she's like, fox make that sound? I'm like, yep. They make a very, very screaming, like, almost sounds like a woman screaming, um, which is very intimidating if... You, you know, if you've never heard it before and you're in the timber in the middle of the night, uh, definitely a, a very, very scary sound. But our fox population is definitely getting thicker. She's had a lot of issues with fox getting her chickens and such. You know, that's that's kind of my, my outlook on life in general. Um, you know, I am the person that... We'll try to find the positive in every single scenario. Um, you know, I just that's just my outlook. I mean, no matter what happens in life, there's always a positive. There's always there's always something to look at and be thankful for. Um, and in a way, I'm I'm kind of happy about that because a lot of people never got that. Um, you know, some people have never gone through rough times, and when something bad does happen. It, it kind of shocks them. Um, you know, I grew up, you know, I'm very thankful for a day that nothing bad happened. Let's just say that. Oh, cool, John. Really, Patrick? I've never heard that one. Oh, scab, that's freaky. Yeah, John, so we're getting a lot of reds around here right now. Um, the red population is definitely, definitely coming up, which is kind of crazy um, because you'd think the coyote population would be going crazy too, but um, it's definitely the reds. They're, they're coming up. Uh, 
I, I, we're getting a lot more bobcats around here too. Um, five, seven, eight. There's a lot of cats around here. Way more than there used to be. Um, it's, yeah. I hope Iowa opens up the, the quota completely here before too long. You're right, Oscar. You're 100% right. Um, just hope it's our day to, to come out ahead on things. Yeah, Flint Lock. It's just too bad that the their fur isn't worth much. Um, that's why everything I catch this year, as far as reds go, are going to be hopefully tanned with feet on, made into hats. That's kind of my big plan next year. Really, Oscar? I've never heard that one. Yeah, hunting stuff. We're only allowed three in my area. Um, barely three. You go just north of us, and you're only allowed one. So. Which is crazy because, I mean, there's guys a half hour from me that can catch 30 a year, so. <laughs> really, Flint Hills? That's crazy. <sighs> Patrick, and that's, you know, that's, that's Mother Nature kicking in to control the populations in my eyes. Um... You know, parvo kicks in, distemper. I'm really worried distemper is going to hit our coon population really bad here soon. Uh, just a matter of time. Oh, really hunting and stuff? Yeah, we, we've got three three buds, but... Yeah, man, too early for that. We got three months, but you're only allowed the three, so... <laughs> Neil? Nope, probably a fox. Or, yeah, 578. I get it. I get it. Oh, nice, John. No limits. Wow, you got a hundred reds, man. That's crazy. I bet those reds up there are really, really thick and really, really good looking reds. Scab, I'm jealous of that, buddy. I really am. That's crazy. Especially the otter. That would be pretty good. James, um, Iowa Trapper, the number two at Gmail. Um, so Iowa Trapper, the number two at Gmail. All right, five, seven, eight. I appreciate it, buddy. Um, you take care of yourself and thanks for stopping in. I was hoping it was just Iowa Trapper at Gmail, but someone beat me to it. What's funny is I actually know the guy after I, I shared it a while ago. There you go. Yep, Scab's got it right there. Um, Iowa Trapper, the number two at Gmail. So. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's much better. Hopefully going to be running about 60 to 70 snares this year, too. Uh, we're starting to, starting to get a little pile of them here on the side of the, the freezer, but... Try Creek with soy. Oh, uh, next gen. That's not good, my friend. Yeah, that sounds like sounds like distemper, buddy. 
And I imagine it's only going to get worse from here, bud. You call them city slickers. The ocean fox are big chunky monkeys. Very full and red. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. The ocean fox. Man, that, you're living a dream up there, buddy. Um, the ocean fox. We will trap an ocean fox. That's cool. That's cool. Just pinched my fingernail with a freaking feral. Oh, it's just a bad day. <laughs> Hot and stuff. Beaver this year. Beaver by far. Um, Beaver fur is going to be the best, probably followed closely by skunk. And then after that, it's going to be pretty rough. Um, your bottom of the barrel is going to be coon and coyote for sure. Oscar, so our raccoon, when they get high populations, um, kind of mother nature will kick in and they'll throw out distemper or issues to kind of knock down the population uh, substantially. Um, when that comes through here, it'll take out, oh, don't quote me on this, but some of you guys that might know more than me, I'm going to say 75 to 85% of the population. Crazy up here, even with the thermal. Oh, yeah. And Hoyt, that's a huge thing here. We've got a lot um, of those guys Ooh, I put this on backwards. We'll be all right. Um, we've got a lot of thermal guys around here anymore, and the population is definitely growing. Um, so I'll have to see, see what ends up happening here um, over the next few years. But I know you got a lot more thermal guys than, than houndsmen anymore. Ooh, pretty quick for being backwards. Hunting stuff, bobcats will be fair. Um, they're probably next in line. I mean, you know, a good bobcat is going to bring you more than a skunk. But um, as far as prices in comparison to where they've been at, beaver, skunk, cats are going to be fair. I heard rats will be fair, but then I've also heard they'll be bad. So it's kind of kind of up in the air. Um, it's supposed to be. Supposed to find out by now some of my markets, but that got pushed back to next week, um, which is frustrating because we need to get it established here pretty quick. Oh, scab, did you really? That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, boy, I bet those will be some pretty good cats as far as spots go, Patrick. Gonna have to switch out my my spool of cable over here. We're kind of we're down. We're running out. Not much left ever. Yeah, the reel is showing. Yeah, that's that's not true. Um, unfortunately, well, actually, fortunately. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're doing it small, small, a little bit, yeah, you're probably right. You are. Um, the markets that I'm working on right now, if I have a raccoon that I can harvest everything I want to off of it, I'm looking at about a thirteen dollar raccoon. Um, which would be huge. Uh, but that means, you know, I can't skull harvest, skull dispatch anything. So, um, who knows? Who knows? Uh, you know, but I mean, obviously, well over half of mine will be a skull dispatch. So, that right there will take out a, a decent amount. But, working on it. 
Yeah, Patrick. I. It's about that time, kind of like he did a little bit ago. He's going to come out with something and says, Coon are going to be better. He's optimistic about them. Um, my honest opinion, and I'm not saying this, you know, I don't know how you feel about him, but I, I don't trust him. Um, I, I think they're kind of becoming a monopoly. And in that situation, even if raccoons say we're $20 a piece again, he's still going to only pay you $3 because he has no one else to compete with. And trappers, you know, our strength that we love to do what we do, which is amazing. But it's also kind of our downfall of we're going to trap no matter what. And if we have one person to sell to, we're going to sell them at whatever price he wants. So, yeah, Hoy, otters are going to be good too. That's right. Um, otters should be pretty good. I wouldn't say great. Um, unless you know a little more than I do about it, but um, I was told they'd be they'd be good. Patrick, so I reached out to a couple people that know about the death ray more. Actually, Kendall himself, who now owns it, and I thought to myself, "Hey, let's get five or six death rays. I can grab that raccoon, crank it down enough, throw the whole death ray and raccoon in back of the truck, reset the trap, go to spot two." Do the same thing with death ray number two. And then by the time I use five death rays, the first one should be well done, dispatched, and move forward. Um, the problem is I think it'd take too much time just because coon are so handsy trying to get the death ray properly over them without getting their arm in there, I think it'd be really tough. Oh, Scab, you're 100% right. You're 100% right. Yeah, John, I remember that. 2013, I averaged right at $100 on two otters, so. Iowa Trapper Community in the U.S. What PETA? Um, what does PETA actually stand for? People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, I think, is the appropriate term. Um, Yeah, Patrick, and that's I don't don't ever take me trying to go against you on things. I just I, I I've dealt with I tried to deal with Glo Gronwald once. He's never actually bought never actually bought any fur from me, but I tried to deal with him once. Um, it didn't work out, but as businessmen, it was fine. Um, I wanted a price he wasn't willing to give, and that's fine. And I moved forward with it. The next year, I saw him at convention, and this is what turned me off to Gronwald. He was at the booth at convention, and I walked up to him, and he's on his phone, and he's texting. And I, I sat there for probably 30 seconds, and he looked up and goes, how are we doing? And went back to his phone. I said, oh, not bad. How are you? Oh, oh good. And I was like, okay, so how's the coon looking this year? What was that? I was, I was just curious how the how the raccoons looking this year. I'm looking at moving probably about a thousand of them. I'm sorry, what was that? I'm you know looking at moving about a thousand coon this year. You know, just kind of curious where it's at. Oh yeah, it's gonna be tough. He wouldn't even give me the time of day to talk to me. Um, and even as a business point, I want to have a real relationship with someone buying fur. Um, the guy I deal with a lot, he's kind of a private individual, so I won't say his name. There are times I've sold raccoons to him for, it's not been a lot because, you know, money does talk, but I will gladly sell my raccoons to him for 10% less than somebody else just because of the relationship I have with him. Um, you know, for example, when he'll just randomly text me, Merry Christmas, or, you know, he'll just get a hold of me and say, Hey, how's the family doing? That type of relationship means something to me in my eyes. And, and you'll never have that with grown old. Um, he's all about profit and money and never building a relationship. And that's, that's not me. 
I want to know my buyer. You know, I, I know his kids' names. Uh, I actually know when one of their birthdays is. I know he's been adding stuff to his – he built a deck on his house here about two months ago. That's that's what I want to know. I want to really build a relationship. Sorry, got on a rant. Ah, Patrick, exactly. Uh, vet, um, Gronwald sells pretty much everything overseas. He's got actual – um, companies overseas in China and all across the all across the world. Oh yeah, yeah. Patrick said it right there. Exactly, John. It really does. It does. Hoyt in Northeast Iowa, you've got some really good quality coon up there. You really do. Probably not the quantity that we do. Um, but you have the quality for sure. And that's the thing, Patrick. I just, you know, when, when my buyer can text me on random days, just be like, hey, man, how's life? And it's like, it's June. We're not even talking fur right now. But he'll just message me just because he's a good person. I'll gladly take a slight pay cut to deal with somebody like that. Um, every single, every single chance I can. Um, Flintlock, you can get stuff in there, but it has to be dressed, um, which means it has to be tanned already. So basically what's going on, um, kind of like Gronwald's doing and many of the other, the few people that are actually sending stuff overseas, what they're doing is they're sending stuff that's they're getting stuff tanned, actually, kind of where Oscar's at in like Malaysia um, and some other countries, and then they're shipping it into China. Um, that's kind of how they're they're moving things. Oh, Oscar, there are a few people that use mink to hunt rats. Next gen, you take care, buddy. Um, thanks for stopping in, man. Whew. Oh, Flint Hills, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he does. Hunting <laughs> stuff. I appreciate you stopping in, buddy. Um, no, it's just, it is what it is, but when it comes to buying fur, I want more, you know, I want a personal relationship with who I'm selling fur to. Um, both people I've sold fur to in the last three years, you know, I've got that. Um, I'll talk to them about life. You know, how, how are things going? How's the family? Um, and I, I want that. I don't know. Maybe it's it's selfish of me, and I'd be a terrible businessman. But I I wanna I wanna know who I'm dealing business with, um, and I want more than just numbers. What you're giving for fur, you know? Who are you? What's your overall outlook? What are you trying to do? And, and I trust my guys. I really do. Um, for example, not this last spring, the year before, I think it was. Was it this spring? When coyotes took a crap, when everything went downhill, um, my main buyer that I've dealt with, he says, hey, coyotes are about ready to tank. What you have, you need to move. Um, and I do get a bunch of coyotes in from guys that hunt them with thermals and, and hounds. They just drop them off on my porch. Uh, wife's thrilled. But So I'll have 45, 50 coyotes. And I thought, oh, I appreciate the warning, but... You know, I don't have any money into them except skinning and flushing. I'll see what happens. Big mistake. Three weeks later, everything plummeted. Everything went to the drain. Um, you know, and that right there shows how truthful he was with me. He wasn't doing it trying to, you know, oh, market's going to go up and he's wanting to buy him for something now. No, it plummeted. And he knew it and he told me about it. So that right there. Any lack of trust I had in him was gone. He warned me, and I just didn't acknowledge it. It would surprise me, Patrick. Um, he is backed by a, a major player overseas that has a lot of money. Oh, yeah, Flintlock, 100%. You're 100% right. Yeah, scab. That's crazy, isn't it? <sighs> Vet, I'm glad you had to lighten the mood, man. I'm glad you glad you had to take that shot. 
None. But I'll tell you what, with all these snares I'm making now, we're going to change that this next year because we're setting them on opening day. We are setting them on opening day. Upset bowl 69. It's tender right now. Um, I make the wrong movement. It hurts a lot worse, but it's not really my ankle. It's my actual foot. <laughs> nice, John. Oscar, um, in a way, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, it's just, it's tough, especially the fur market. I'll tell you what we really need to do is get fur going back in the U.S. again. That would solve all our problems. Um, all these people that are anti-fur, anti, you know, everything that we do, um, we need to show them it's a natural renewable resource. That if we don't control the populations, Mother Nature will kick in. Um, that would be huge for us. Yeah, me too, buddy. Uh, I'm a little nervous. Tomorrow at 11, I'll find out more about it. Um, she's throbbing pretty good now, especially since I'm actually got it down and not elevated. But yeah, time will tell. Time will tell. That's not my biggest worry right now either, so. <laughs> but I'm just trying to move on, like trapping season's gonna happen regardless. So, like I said, I'll go out there and cast if I have to, but definitely might affect the overall numbers, but we'll know, we'll know more tomorrow. Teardrop. Turn circle. That's what I like. Right at that eight inch spread. That one's not as quick as I like. A lot better. A lot better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all petroleum, Flint Hills. That's what it is. It's it's so double sided. You see all these people against fur, against this and that, and they're wearing a leather belt, and it's like, really? <laughs> it's just, it is rough. It's rough. Oscar, I don't know what it's like in Malaysia, but um, I mean, this might. I hope this doesn't offend too many people, but. To be honest with you, it's kind of a tough time to be an American right now. A true, what I call American. Um, everything you do is watch so closely. You make the wrong move here, and you're hated by everybody. It's just tough right now. It's tough up here. Um, you can definitely tell our our world is changing, which is, I understand that. You know, we, we change, the world changes, but man, it's going in the wrong direction, I feel. Oh, really, Scab, he didn't? Oh, cool, upset bull. That's awesome. I wish you luck, my man. Donnie, how we doing? Wow, yeah, you got some big coon up there. Vet, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Problem is, there, there's less of us any more than there are of the people that are offended by every single thing you do. Donnie, beaver and otter and cats and skunk are your best bets. Oh, Nick, I, yeah, I bet, buddy. I bet. Yeah, Oscar, that's getting big here. That's getting big. Wow, Flintlock, we're actually doing better. I just filled up today for 339 before I went trapping, or scouting, I should say. Don, I'm going to be setting a lot of fence crosses. Um, 
It's going to be in the right of way, so I can't set them that close to the fence, but I've got some really good stuff set up. Brian, how we doing? <laughs> Scam. I think this one right here puts me at 50 snares, so we're getting there. Um, I think, so this is what's crazy, how my line changes but doesn't. Um, with some of the spots that I set last year that I avoided this year and setting some of the spots that I set, I avoided last year but set this year. I came up to a road that ended on the highway after I messed my, my foot up. At this exact stop last year, I was at location number 247 on my GPS. This year, I was at 244. So that just shows how consistent my line is. So out of the, I don't even know what it was, probably 50 miles or 60 miles that I was on, the amount of trails I found was within three of of last year. So kind of crazy. Oh, Patrick, 579. Man, your government hates you. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but that sucks. That is really, really rough. Water monitor lizard skin. I'd be interested in that. What parts you use for coyote snares? Um, upset bull 69. Um, so I'm using a, a 564th cable, 7x7. Seven seven. I'm using the death blow snare lock. If you can probably not see that. There's teeth on it. Maybe. If I can show you. So I'm going to focus it on them. Anyway, there's teeth. Um. I got a deer stop, which I'm going to put on, um, which is our law here in Iowa to keep them from going to two and a half inch minimum. Um, so I make my actual snare adjustment here or my snare itself on the end of it. I like the, uh, the poly, um, whammies as you call them. And then I'm just running a double loop, kind of like how I do my, my pogos. I'm running a loop. I can run this whole snare in around the kill pole. Uh, we'll see more of the kill pole here once season gets here. Hey, thanks, John. I appreciate it, man. I really do. Um, tomorrow's a, a pretty big day for my family. Um, hopefully, hopefully things go well. That's all I can say. We yeah, upset bull, so we got our teardrop loop here. I'll go ahead and put a load on it, which changes it from that teardrop to more of an oval shape because I put a natural bend in this side. Um, probably put a little too much. We'll kind of try to straighten that out a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. Not quite a full teardrop because um, here in Iowa, we have an 8-inch wide um, maximum for snares, which is right here. And that load puts basically tension on the cable. So when it starts to go shut, it slams shut. Oh, man, Brian, that, that's disappointing. That is disappointing. Oh, on land? Yeah. Uh, it's crazy how water has so much different opportunities. Um, Nick, they don't post it, but you can get on certain sites and stuff and find it if you know what you're looking for. Um, it can be kind of hard, though. Um but there's like beacon websites in Iowa that'll tell you who the landowners are of what area. Oh, okay, James. Um, 
I haven't got it yet, but I'm sure I will at some point. No, no, Hoyt, she... So, Mama, we all have our own deals, ways of processing. Um, I gave her words of encouragement. Um, she was laying there, laying with her in bed. So, I, I know my wife enough to know that nothing I say, or even my presence at this exact moment will help. Um, tomorrow morning when she wakes up, I'll give her another good praise. But once she hits a certain point of just... She wants to be alone, um, in a sense, I guess. Uh, and I'm the same way. I, I am the biggest, I don't know, it's weird. If, when I'm going through issues, like real, real bad issues, I hit a certain point where it's just I want to be left alone. Um, hopefully it never comes to that, but. Yeah, her bedroom lights off, so she's asleep anyway. So the internet story about coyote hybrid with a wolf. I I can't confirm or deny that, Oscar. Um, either way is possible. Um, there's rumors of coyotes and dogs breeding too, which I've heard. Um, which I neither have a you know, an opinion on, it's possible, I think, but people say that they won't breed. I can't, I can't really say. Yeah, hunting and stuff, she's a trooper. Um, I, I think this stuff kind of hits her hard. It hits her harder than me. Um, she, she's a sweetheart and, and she's very, very sensitive with stuff. You know, like I said, it's all about how you grew up. Um, you know, she, her childhood was different. Um, you know, it, it wasn't, for the first part, it was probably pretty easy. Um, she, they didn't have money issues by any means, trust me. Um, my in-laws, that's definitely not something they've really ran into. But when she got pregnant with my son in high school, um, then she saw how tough life could be. She pretty much she was on her own after that point um at least temporarily uh so she she knows how cruel the world can be um but you know it made her stronger and it built who she is and and that's life you know um she kind of had a she had an option and she picked an option and that's why we have our son right now and i wouldn't change him for the world he's not biologically mine but you know he, he has different passions than me for the most part but we go out we have fun we he got to kill his first real buck last week or two weekends ago um he's he's growing up and it's, it's pretty amazing so uh, everyone comes from their own past guys we all have a past Uh, Briar, uh, if I find water, yeah. Oh, cool, Flint Hills. Kansas is this weekend. Is that the, uh, no, I was thinking Oklahoma. That's in a while. That's cool, man. That's awesome. I hope you have a good time. Oh, I appreciate it, Hoyt. Um, no, my family always come first. Uh, sometimes I think probably people forget about that. Um, but no, like, I've, I, there's been times I've wanted to go live and, you know, certain circumstances come up and I don't. But um, she was processing things and I was out here making snares to do my own thing. And I thought, you know what, let's see what the world's up to. Because trapping season's coming up. Um, it's right around the corner. So... Oh, really, Scab? That's interesting. That is interesting.
depending on how tomorrow goes, is going to really kind of dictate how my season goes. Because we are four and a half weeks from opening day. Two days and one month from tomorrow is our opening day here in Iowa. Because it opens November 5th. Tomorrow's the... No, it'd be tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's the 5th, isn't it? Yeah, so it's really sneaking up on us. Got my snares built. We'll get them dyed and they'll be ready at least. Really, Hoyt? I did not know that. Huh. That's crazy I didn't know that because normally I'd, I'd hear about something like that. Yeah, everybody's wanting to protect these wolves, but you see the devastation they're causing out in the western states? Oh my gosh. Hunting and stuff, I don't blame you. I, man. Wolves are bad news. Bad news across the country. I guess that's my opinion. I mean, they have their place, but when you start introducing them into places that are, you know, where they shouldn't be, um, bad things are going to happen. They spent that much scab. That's ridiculous. I can't think of what it was here when I spent was quite a bit of money on otters. And then we sent them. What did we send? We exchanged otters with a southern state. I want, to, I want to say like North Carolina. We exchanged something with them. But anyway, now... 20 years later, our otter populations exploded. Oscar, alligator populations here in the U.S. are crazy in the southern part. Um, the few people I know that are down there, they're just, gators are everywhere. Don, you're not wrong, buddy. You are not wrong, so... Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, hybrids in Newark. Protect. Yeah, and that'd be tough, Nick. That would be tough. That would be tough. But I think we're going to call it a night. Got a big day tomorrow. Going to go take a nice cold shower, I think. See how this foot's feeling in the morning. But she's throbbing pretty good. And it's funny, like, Unless I set my foot down in the wrong way, it doesn't hurt that bad. I mean, it throbs, but until I put pressure on it, oh, man, it's a, it's a whole new kind of hurt. But I really appreciate y'all's support, guys. Um, means the world to me and my family. It really does. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> Patrick, yeah, right? Um, means the world to me and my family, guys. It just shows that the trapping world we really are a tight-knit group um and just amazing people so yeah don i'm more worried about the pup than i am myself for sure just for my family's sake um i could push back my opening day a little bit if i had to it sucks too but to to not have them deal with anything negative would be a lot better than than me having a, a bum leg Oscar, absolutely, man. Um, you take care of yourself over there in Malaysia. James, I appreciate it, bud. Time will tell. Um, definitely need to get this sucker back up in the air, though. It's starting to throw out pretty good. but It's been fun, guys. It really has. Don, I appreciate that, man. Um, Life goes on, guys. It gets tough. We get we get punched. We get pushed back. We get pushed down. 
and no matter what happens you always come out stronger on the other side so that's what you got to keep keep doing oh cool Hoyt. that's interesting scab i'm hoping you're right man um well, i was hoping by now about 12 hours later it wouldn't be hurting as much as it is but it's definitely definitely hurting probably more so yeah patrick i noticed that messed something up when i was 18 and i healed quick now it's like eh, not so much not so much so anyway guys um really appreciate y'all support y'all have a good night and uh i'll keep you guys posted but we'll through right now it's it's going to be blue skies and pushing forward tomorrow. So, yeah, thanks, Oscar. I appreciate it. So, we'll see you guys later. Everybody, have a good night and be careful.